welcome everybody. This is the regular meeting of Darien Parks and Recreation Commission, July 17th. Uh, first, I would like to introduce and welcome our new commission members. Um, we have three starting between tonight and next month, which might be a record in my memory. I don't know about yours, Susan, but three at once is a lot. So, uh, third turnover, so we'll all be getting to know each other in due order. But first is Ed Washeka. Hi. Over here. Right, so Ed, you want to give us just, just, just give a for the public just a couple minutes? Oh, a couple minutes. Uh, a couple minutes. Uh, Ed Washeka, I've lived in town since uh, 2003, uh, raised my kids here, um, was on the RTM. Mm -hmm. Well, probably close to 10 years and on the education committee and chaired it for maybe the last uh, four or five. Great. Okay. And then Cindy's over here. Cindy Banks? Yeah. Um, Cindy Banks. I've lived here over 20 years. Um, I was on the advisory board of health committee um, many years ago. Um, started that committee. I'm a posty adult advisor here in town. Um, worked at Stanford Hospital for many years, um, have been involved in the PTO, um, have two kids that have gone through the public school system, um, and very excited to join and contribute to the town. Great. Thanks, Cindy. And then joining us on August 1st is Terry Bach, who's sitting 79, go on, swoop around and get him. Uh -oh. Uh, hi, Terry Bach. I live in town 17 years, uh, four kids, all either through or on their way through Darien Public Schools, two in college, two still in high school. Um, a volunteer perspective and also working at times with Parks and Rec. Uh, served for a long time on the Darien Little League Board, uh, also DJFL, and also Darien Junior uh, Field Hockey. Great. So we have three great new members, lots of Time in town, lots of volunteer experience, which I think is going to, we're going to be able to draw on all of your experiences and relationships with all of these different groups in town. So I'm really excited. Uh, but with that, of course, Susan is leaving us after tonight. Um, just thank you for everything. Can't even, can't even summarize it all. But thank you so, so much. I'm going to get your number. Yep. <laughs> I'm happy to you get you take phone calls us. and text or whatever with questions, but I think you guys got this. Uh, who gets the binders? Hmm? Who gets the binders? I just want to <laughs> get the binders. I was, my son was like, do you put the fireplace? <laughs> <laughs> but anybody that wants them, there, there's five of them or something. <laughs> Susan has binders with all of the materials from every meeting for the last 18 years. Wow. Yes, she does. She used to come with her binders. <laughs> I think she needed a way. People ask a question, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so she's got it all. So thank you so much for your service, your contribution to the playgrounds, Weed Beach, the gardens, and we just, just so, so many things in town that you've, uh, you've contributed to and made our part. Thank you so much. Susan, thank you very much for everything you've done. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, really has a lot of different things. And, um, I hope you enjoy the fireworks for putting on for your department. What? The fireworks, <laughs> right? Yeah. For your <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. Yeah. Thank you. Is it? And um, also, uh, Kathy Mulro Petey, who has worked with us for three, four, five years now. I don't know where exactly. Four, five. Yeah, decided uh, that she needed to step off of the commission for personal reasons. So um, she's not here, but I do want to publicly thank her for her service. She was a really terrific member, very thoughtful. Uh, as a lawyer, she always brought the um, sort of legal perspective that's a little bit, bit different to us and um, served as good sort of, you know, counsel and advisor to me on, on different topics that came up. So we will miss her very much. I was disappointed to see her. But we have a great group, and I think we're ready to press on. So, first item of business is to approve the minutes of our June 12th meeting. Um, I went through them. She left the weather, I just went through them. But anyway, um, I did go through them to make a few, few corrections. So, I don't know, does anybody have anything else? Questions, comments? No, everybody's good. So I think I'm good because I've been through them. So, um, are you calling for a vote? Yeah. 
Yes, so with that, May I, to the minute? I believe on the minutes, the minutes, yes, I think, believe Diane Conlog was online. Okay, so you can add her. I apologize for not saying that before now. I'm gonna look down to Diane. Okay, so thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Del Thanks, Adele. Um, okay, I don't think we distinguished who was online, who wasn't, who was online versus who, who wasn't, but. All right, so with that, I will take a motion to accept the minutes as amended. Amy? Mary Louise? Yeah. All in favor? I was in your minute, I'm staying. Okay. I'm okay. 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 So five. Five, zero. Five, zero. Two abstentions. Three abstentions. Hands up for yeses. Three, three, one, two, three, four, five, yeses. Five and three abstentions. Mm -hmm. Yep, yes, yes, because Janet's not good. She has unwell children. We did not want to bring her unwell children to share with us. She was in fact appreciated. Okay, okay. Uh, next we have public comment. Members of the public, but Adele, I know you have some things for us. Uh, uh, Adele Connor for RTM Park Senior. Um, just, I know that um, Cheryl Russell sent a letter to Maureen, and so she likes, she's our sort of resident at the Pear Tree Point Beach. She was on the Pear Tree um, Building Committee and as ever vigilant, I know she wanted to share some of her thoughts. So here I am, and I'm going to read it. Uh, hope your summer, this is to Lori, hope your summer is going well and your grandchildren will soon be with you. Enjoy them as time goes by so fast. <laughs> I would like to give you an update on what has been happening at Pear Tree Beach so far this summer. The live guards are doing a great job and have to put up with some people not obeying the rules, such as using noodles in the water. One woman was told she couldn't use them and argue with guards and some ball playing on the beach. A few weeks ago, a couple of men dug a huge hole in the sand. It was deep as their hips and small children were playing in it. They laughed and never filled it in. The next day, two mothers filled it in. I think Cheryl was really worried, you know, since a child was killed in another, another uh, state where in a deep hole that collapsed on them. I think, you know, that made her a little nervous. She was hoping maybe like or somebody could have said something. At the beginning of June, there was a fire pit left on the beach. Some burnt logs were put by trash cans by mothers, and some mothers put sand over larger logs so children would not touch them. Also, some must have been raked into the sand by the park and rec men, as some small burnt logs were found by the flagpole. They were there for a few days till I put them in the trash. They should have been removed immediately. People are very upset that there's only one toilet in both bathrooms. I, I was told by a male friend who was using the men's room, a child came in with his father and couldn't wait, so the father told the child to pee in the shower. I believe this may be happening as the men's room does, once again, have that odor. As this summer has been extremely hot, more people are sitting in their cars with the engines running for long periods of time, 45 minutes. This is very upsetting for people who sit under the trees trying to read or have a conversation with friends. Engine running is against Connecticut law. Without signs, I cannot ask people to turn off their cars. Please put up a couple of these signs so people can enjoy the beach. People are entering the beach without stickers, mostly on weekends. I'm not sure if they're paying as I haven't seen the paper on the dashboards. I've also been approached by others who, can, who have seen cars in the beach without stickers. On a good note, there haven't been many dogs in the beach. I know this is a long list, but I believe the commission should know what's taking place at Pear Tree. I think particularly the, the island cars seems to be a recurring theme. And I think some of the, from what uh, Cheryl described to me, I think some of it's from people, maybe people who have to sit in their cars, you know, they might have um, handicaps or being brought by a caregiver, but having people with the car running for like 30 minutes is, is a problem for everybody else. You know, so it's a hard to breathe, I think, probably. So that's Cheryl's comments for this evening. Um, the other question I have is I have received 
a copy, a uh, CC for a uh, question about the signs that Sherry on for the, at the playground for the young children's play, uh, playground. The sign was going to, I guess the signs are there, they haven't been put in yet. And the, for the younger playground, it was 5 to 12, and the person was asking if that was the same. Okay. Or why? We've adjusted with the event then. Was it and 5 to 12? Or it was 2 to 12. Excuse me, I'm sorry. It was 2 to 12, but it should be 2 to 5. And um, they're going to, it's just a sticker. And I guess they got sent the wrong sticker. So okay. they've got new ones already, and they're going to be on in time for the Perfect. opening. Thank you for okay. that. That's true. Thank you. We appreciate all eyes and ears. Helps us to suppress things. Um, let me go on to Cheryl's comments about the idling and other things. Is it the responsibility of the person in the hut to walk and tell people? I, I'm not sure. See, that's tricky. And this came up last summer as well. And um, if they leave the hut, then they're not there to check right. stickers. Uh, previous summers, remember, we had hired a summer, we call them sort of a roving right. parks monitor. And that individual, when he witnessed the behavior, would go up and, and ask people to stop, but we don't have that anymore. Um, yes, Ed? I, look, I knew, so I, now I know it's tempting to sort of respond to whatever, but should our role as a commission be to, most of what was in that letter really seemed like it should really go to the Parks and Rec Department. I mean, it just seems to me we should be looking at policy and, Things like that, and like kind of leaving to the implementation of it to not us. I don't know if that's actually true, but. Well, well yeah, Jen and the staff would implement it, but we certainly like to discuss the issues, know what's happening in the parks. Sometimes we find out about activities which end up in us making an update to our rules because we realize that our rules don't specifically address a behavior or activities that we don't. I'll stay as long as you guys want. I, I just kind of think there's something to be said for. You know, taking our responsibility at a higher level, more strategic, and leaving the operations to the staff. So, the light bars. So, um, we have talked about the once we we got this, we were talking a little bit about it. Um, there are some posts I think that are already exist with some signs. So we were talking we could get some signage for. Um, uh, the idling so that at least something is there and posted um, and that way there is something to point to without adding to additional signage clutter. Um, we have talked to, staff have already been talked about a little bit with the, um, just asking people to help follow follow the rules, things like that, the, the noodle incident and so, some other things. Um, I was not aware until today about well, the hole that was dug, so we'll, we will talk to staff about that. Um, you know, one issue is that lifeguards, the role of lifeguards, unfortunately, really should be focused on the safety of the water and, and the beach versus patrolling for idling cars and things like that. So I think we have to try to figure things out. If there's a supervisor there or something that can look at that or if someone mentions it to them, maybe they could go out and take a look. But to pull them away from the responsibilities that they have, I think would not be um, the, the best way to, to handle it. Um, in terms of the toilets in the, uh, only being one, one toilet now, unfortunately when the work was done, they had to make it ADA compliant. Um, so there is not enough room in there to have more than just the one toilet. So we're, Kind of stuck, I think, in that in that sense. But um, Jen, I think yeah. that um, we should probably look at as a commission um, trying to get something in the budgets. There's two showers in the metro, and really we only need one. Maybe we can convert one of the showers to a urinal. Um, I've heard the same thing. I've heard a lot of people saying that they're bummed out about it being one toilet in there. And so I don't know. I mean, since there's two showers in there, we have one outside. Maybe we only need one in the metro, and we can convert one to a year and over. We could look at, at what the cost would be to do something like that in the future. Yeah, it's a good idea. And I echo Jim's comments. Uh, we've, we've talked about this, actually. But every time I'm down there, I get the exact same complaints. And the fact that for the metro, if we already have the plumbing, if it's possible. To right. Make yeah, it no, work. that's certainly something we'll, we'll look into. Um, I think that's a good solution if we can do it. Um, 
shouldn't, I wouldn't think it would cost all that much, so hopefully we can, we can take care of that. Um, well, also with regard to the budget, you know, the, the, the parks monitor position was eliminated and, you know, if we continue to hear concerns about, you know, various behaviors, um, you know, we may say we have to think about putting okay. the budget together and talking about that as a commission, right. you know, whether we feel that that's a role that's warranted again. You know, I actually heard John say at another meeting on Monday night that he was walking Selix Woods with Chris Filmer um, and somebody had their dog off leash and Chris, who we all know is about the most gentlemanly gentleman on the face of the earth, lightly asked the individual not to and apparently took a very long use of many unpleasant words, tongue lashing in doing so. So John mm -hmm. witnessed that firsthand, kind of what happens when we try to lightly enforce our rules. So. It's a challenge. It's an ongoing challenge. Yeah, you ran into that also. A couple times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've run into it all this time. It counts. Anyway, so mm -hmm. lots of works. But yeah, so you know, again, we'll we'll try to, we'll follow up with a bunch of these um, with the comments, you know, a, as we normally would. As mm -hmm. as we hear things, we'll we'll look to address them. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Adele. As always, anything else from RTM committee? That's it for now. That's it for now. Okay. Kim, you good? Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item is election of secretary. Um, as I mentioned, with Kathy's departure from the commission, she was uh, serving as our secretary, and we are required under town code to have one. Um, the minutes are the meetings are recorded by TV79, which is enormously helpful to us, and Tamara uses that to create the minutes and does it. Amazing job, um, and Valerie did it in her absence over the summer, she and, and Tara. But we do need to have a secretary. Um, I've chatted with some of you. I asked Ed if he would consider serving in the role um, about his background on the RTM, et cetera. Um, so you're still looking and seeing minutes and stuff. That, I don't want to do it, but if you need me to do it, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we do. Okay. So. We do. Thank you. Okay. And as I said, she does a really good job. I look at them and it's really just, yeah, this is an accurate reflection. And I think if you see you read these this month, they're, they're, they're well done. So that would be very helpful. Thanks for stepping up. Thank you for stepping up. Um, so I need somebody to... Motion to nominate Edward. <laughs> 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 okay, so <laughs> Um, so we have the vote. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Enthusiastically. That with two hands. Okay. Um, discussion and vote related to continued display of existing donor plaque at Cherry Lawn Playground. Uh, Jen put together a package on this and. We just wanted to be thoughtful about this and then let people weigh in before we make the decision. Um, the donor plaque has been there since the original playground was put in 2004, yeah, 2004 so about 20 years ago. Can I just put it? Yes, the original playground. There was a playground before that. Okay. So, but the one that we just um, replaced. Okay. Thank you for that correction. Sure. That correction. And so the question really came up, you know, what do we do with this? Plaque. Do we continue to display it? Do we take it down because the donors supported equipment that we in turn actually donated? Um, so we just wanted to be thoughtful about it. You know, when you read it, there's you know many well-known names in town. Um, it looks like there was a donation made in memoriam of what appears to be a fairly young child. Um, so I just wanted to be a little bit sensitive and have a conversation about it, whether we should relocate it or whatever. Would it make sense to donate it to the Darien Historical Society? Something like that. I, I feel like, I mean, I know that it's, it's, um, it's weathered, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I do feel like people who donated for the playground even back then deserve to be recognized. Mm -hmm. And I feel, I feel, I would like to see us have the ability to polish it up. Mm -hmm. I would prefer to keep it. I just think that people who donated should be recognized. As do the new ones, you know, I put a new plate on anybody's done, which we are doing, I guess, in the bricks, but um, I don't know. 
right. We just don't have, the, the question that becomes like, this is the second or third, you're gonna be collecting all these plaques. And this one happens to be right when you walk in. Mm -hmm. So it should be a sign that says, welcome to Cherry Lawn Playground, and express to make the rules, things like that. And I am, I, you know, I was a fundraiser by training for many years, like 20 years. And these things, they do have a useful life. It's been 20 years since this was up there with the recognition. We're keeping the bricks because we thought that it was so viable. Mm -hmm. we, 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 so a lot of that's in there, a lot of the beautiful wording that you see on the bricks, they're going to stay with the new bricks. But this plaque is pretty large, and mm -hmm. it's kind of front and center. And we tried to figure out a place to put it in the playground that was safe, and we don't have a ton of space there, you know, to do that. What about building into the walkway in some fashion? Yeah, we, it, again, it, it wasn't designed to be a walkway mm -hmm. plaque, so just gonna, it's just going to degrade it further. I mean, yeah. What and do you so, mean? And, and also, I, uh, Jen's going to talk, but she, we, we, I've been in touch with the playground, the people that started the playground for, since we began construction of the new one and designing it. So we've been very sensitive to what, to say that we appreciate everything we've done and the donors and everybody. And so Jen reached out to them uh, a few days ago and they was, Jen, did you yeah. Well, yeah, no, she no I, I did. I said, you know, mm -hmm. here we are, we now have, none of the equipment is, is remaining. Um, and you know, do they have any thoughts on it? And basically, they just said, "Thank you for reaching out." I feel like the lifespan of the 2004 playground project has run its course. Um, and basically, it was a little bit confusing then, so I had to ask for <laughs> confirmation. But they said, "Yes, um, you know, I want. I wrote. I just want to make sure I'm clear on what you wrote. I think you're saying that you are okay with removing the sign altogether. Is that correct?" And they wrote back yes. It's two of the um, four uh, co-chairs of the fundraiser. Yeah. So they okay. they both they both agreed that it's kind of like it's run its course and it was time and, and we should remove it. Some of the people on I mean people still live in there I know that are on this plaque. Yeah. So I don't know how um, the other people would feel. You know, there's a stone marker um, where the old when I first moved here, I'm marking how long I've been here. The original nature center, which used to be the Cherry Lawn School, and there's a stone with the plaque there. Um, I don't know if these could be moved over there. I know they're very large. Is the issue? Yeah, it is large. And then um, we have to like re put it on another piece. And yeah. Then I guess the commission going forward should consider just making sure that you know it's communicated to the donors that it is a useful life thing and that. It's not doesn't mean you're there forever. Like that's the way we explained it when we did playground by the sound. It's as long as that playground exists. But if Ooh. that playground gets replaced and they have to do another set of fundraising, then they need that space to do what they need to do with it. So could what it about if we were taking it down for now, just mm -hmm. to go through this mm -hmm. next phase, but with a view that we're gonna find a place for it. Mm -hmm. Like I think I mean if we can't we can't, but it just your point to be on the major center. I mean, it just mm -hmm. seems like you know, maybe it would fit someplace, even though. Mm -hmm. you know, that's I just think the first side has to be, first of all, the funding aid for the playground is entirely different. And also, you have the bricks are the donors, so you have them recognized. And I think going forward, just looking at ways to recognize gifts, but just it's, it's hard when you start putting something like that as your welcome sign. I mean, I wasn't here when that was done. That was before my time. Mm -hmm. And I, when we did play on the side, we purposely set it into the ground so that people wouldn't be like, oh, you have to pay, you know, like I had to give a lot of money to have this happen. You know, it's just more unobtrusive and mm -hmm. more, you know, not. Yeah. No, I just, um, I, I, I don't just, just, I understand exactly what you're coming from. I would like to find another home for it. Um, it doesn't have to be front and center. Front and center, mm -hmm. I agree we should have a nice, beautiful sign that says Trevor Lock Playground. Everything is new, it should be new, new mm -hmm. sign. It would be nice to find another home. I mean, at Mokwan, we still have the names of the mm -hmm. uh, folks on the plaques. Um, they're still up there. Uh, we recognize Father Mokwan as well as all the donators. Uh, people donated going back to when it was built. And we've done some renovations there, certainly we didn't put a lot as much work as we have at Cherry Wall with everything being brand new. But I just have a thing about it. We're a small town, people put money up. Um, I think it's fair that they get recognized. And especially, you know, the Zangrillos or the sports shop or the Campbells mm -hmm. that brings in who really have built their businesses here. They were the big donators here. 
And I just think it's nice to kind of recognize. But if we can find another hall for it, great. But I don't think it needs to be from yeah. someone. Yeah. I, oh, I just have another thought. So this is on metal. And I know when the town did the 200th anniversary, there were historical markers put up around the town. I don't know if these could somehow be mounted on like a metal pole or something. It's, this and is one big class. You know, so could you take this, I know, could you take this off and remount it? Just, it doesn't even have to have the dairy in. Just put this somewhere. I think that's what the thought is. I mean, yeah, they're looking yeah. for a spot, but honestly, if you look at the sign, it's so weathered now. Yeah. You know, so it's going to be hard to figure out. Like, you're going to have to restore it and do all these other things. I think, but I feel like in this case, also, like, you guys can, let's just worry about replacing that sign and why don't you do some research, Jen, when you get the chance to find a home for it, but keep it in the office in the same place until, yeah. so, you know, you guys identify another location. And, but first, we'll get a, a sign that, welcome to Cherry Lawn, playground, whatever you want to say, mm -hmm. thank you, the year it was built, and information about the age, the ages of mm -hmm. the different places. Yeah, One other thought, the Senior Center, they have a workshop. Um, I don't know if perhaps some gentlemen at the uh, Senior Center would be interested in taking this on and have it that would be number one ownership for them, but I know they redo, they work on bikes, they do all kind of mechanical things, so you could use some resources here in town to, you know, redo this perhaps, and it would be pride on their end as well, um, or perhaps there's another organization in town that would be interested in doing this. Yeah, Chris, you can yes, um, I, I would see that the discussion and <clears throat> the motion I would make would be that we as a commission decide to take it down, replace that, mm -hmm. or keep that beautiful real estate so that Jen mm -hmm. and our team can have something mm -hmm. that's big and gorgeous by the time we open, mm -hmm. uh, which is weeks away. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, something that either is just big and beautiful that's welcome to Cherry Lawn Playground or welcome to Cherry Lawn Playground, also with different age groups for so it's big and bold and everyone can see it this is some great real estate for us to use. Um, so I would make the motion right now that as a commission we just vote that we're going to bring this down and replace it with another sign. Mm -hmm. And we can all discuss further on uh, where the plaque could go. Uh, Mary Louise, I like your idea of the historical society, mm -hmm. I like the idea of refurbishing, but I believe that that could be a discussion at another time. So for right now, I'd like to just make the motion that um, as a commission we agree that we will be removing that and replacing it with a new welcome to Cherry Walk Playground Park. Uh, Cherry Lawn Park playground. Like the other parks, because every park yeah. has one and it's consistent, the size, everything's the same, and this is the only one that has a donor plaque. Yep. So, so I, I totally agree with Chris. I also am looking towards Jim, and I think he's got a really good perspective too. I think we should use this real estate for a welcome, mm -hmm. um, and I, but I do think we should keep it somewhere in, in, in the park, and I would like to add to that one. <coughs> that we do so, actually, and we not just have it kind of disappear, or maybe we'll do this, or maybe we'll do that. Perhaps you could put it on the back side, across from the basketball court, or someplace back there. But I do think that, unless there, the, my other thought was, was there an agreement with the Look donors? Mm -hmm. Was yeah. there? You know, we Jen did research that. So we just why went back to the people that organized the fundraiser. And the so they said there was no room. And they, they said they were okay with, you know, because it's already, yeah, which I think is important. The, you know, I think that's an important perspective. And we have, in theory, taken away the bricks, too, because, in theory, those, that recognition is also, you know, but we did it because we wanted to use the walkway and extend it, and we kept it, and it was in good condition. Yeah, you know, I just want to um, honor the people who, who gave, and I'm a little little sensitive about just, like, sending it off to mm -hmm. my third, and that should be something nice. Like, consider pretty carefully, what does the mine, mine this? Uh, group have any Jim look that up. But I agree with Chris. We should mm -hmm. probably just move it in and Jim, do you know if, uh, the monuments we, we actually have a no, I mean, it's ceremonies. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they would get involved. Mm -hmm. involved yeah. So they don't have any kind of rules associated with this sort of thing? No, I actually read the rules recently because we've got a conversation we have to update the bench program and I've read the rules and now it doesn't really mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess it, it doesn't sounds really like touch we don't have an agreement with them. And the head of this 
the fundraisers who did it before say it's fine to take it down. Mm -hmm. um, and it's we, we all agree that it should, well, most of us, I guess everybody agrees we should use this real estate for a welcome. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're just being sentimental towards those people who, who, who did but, donate. But I think it's, it's, it's nice to honor them, them, but it yeah. doesn't, doesn't sit down. But if you think of their, we don't seem to have any obligation to. Sorry, so you made a motion. Pardon me. So my motion, motion to, yes. was it seconded or? No. It was not. She was trying to amend it. I was Rather, trying to amend yeah. it, but now I'm, I'm talking through it and I'm not sure we have to. So it's now you're second. Yeah. So you're fine. We just say the removal of the existing donor plaque from material on plate or on location, period. And that's, yeah. That's, that's my motion. I guess that's the intent. Jim, is that what you um, Well, I thought we were going to have, that, and, and we would discuss where, where it would be placed. Where it might go, but that's not part of it. I don't think we can. Resolve that this evening. But should that be part of the motion? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll second Chris's motion okay. and as he's made it. Okay. And now we're in discussion if my Vernon or my Roberts right. was in order. Mm -hmm. And it would certainly seem to me that whether it's a motion or not, we could agree that the intention for the department that's going to take it down is mm -hmm. it'll come back in a later discussion. See if we can find a good solution. Because well, I, mean, I think that would. Yeah. It's yeah. going to meet what you and I both agree with, but allow us to okay. move forward. Yep. Seems reasonable. Okay, you second it. I'm in favor. Okay, favor. Opposed? Sure. Opposed? No? Okay, that's Okay, excellent. All right, well, I'm glad we did that because I know I was feeling. Yeah, I just want to honor all my favorites. But I think we're trying to throw it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, next is update from our different advisory groups. Um, Mary Louise, your own for invasives and then the garden. Okay. <clears throat> for the benefit of our new members, <laughs> the invasives working group was formed about two years ago to deal with the whole problem of invasive trees and bushes and so on in all of our parks. Um, we did a lot of work at Cherry Lawn also down at Reed Beach. For the past year, we've really been focused on Cherry Lawn. And um, a lot of invasives were taken down around the pond, the existing pond. Um, we were able to get um, a, an increase in the amount of money that we were uh, asking for um, in terms of uh, buying new trees, new plants, and so on. This was moving along, and EPC said, whoa, you got to stop. We want a visual plan for exactly where everything is going to go. So the committee has identified five landscape design firms. We have interviewed two. We did walking tours with two of them, and uh, we're in the process of scheduling meetings with the three other ones. And hopefully have that we'll have that done by the end of August. We were not planning on doing any of the planting uh, before the fall anyway, so we're kind of on, ta on target there. Did you see that uh, Tracy Mara, her state representative, sent out one of her emails? Last about the spotted lantern fly. Yes, and, and unfortunately, I killed three on my patio. So. This is a first. Are you, oh, do you know what we're talking about? Uh, no, I mean, the invasives, yes. But spotted spotted lantern. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've read about it, but no, you don't need to tell me about it. Yeah. Um, well, there, it's here. But I'm assuming, yeah, it's in Cherry Lawn or whether it's in everywhere, Cherry Lawn. Or, everywhere. Exactly, yeah. And unfortunately, this particular bug makes its home in the Tree of Heaven, which is all over the place. And then they proceed to devour all of our native trees, maples, oaks, all the trees we love. So um, we had taken down 35 Tree of Heavens last year and then discovered that it was not sufficient that you literally take them down. You have to really destroy them. And in doing the research, we are all against using pesticides, herbicides, and so on. But the only way to get rid of the specific tree is to make a cut and then literally paint one of these herbicides on it 
and then it goes down and kills the roots. If you don't do that, even if you cut it down, it sends out roots everywhere, and you end up with five or ten more trees when you had only one before. So it's, it's really, it's insidious. So we're, um, <laughs> we're trying to deal with that as well. <clears throat> the, uh, I did contact the, um, the park and rec crew, and they felt that they were able to handle that in a, uh, a careful manner. You obviously you cannot spray this stuff. I just I was going to ask for the ballpark purposes. So how much are we spending on the what we have to spend on the study for the EPC? Well, we've gotten in terms of the planting for Cherry Lawn specifically, we've got twenty five thousand. <clears throat> now, some of that is going to have to be used for these designers and so on. And uh, we've requested proposals from the two that we interviewed, and we're waiting on that. So we don't know, is it like 2000 or 4000 No, but I'd say probably in the four to five category. Yeah. So that's moving And ahead. we can't do that ourselves. Pardon? We can't do that for EPC ourselves. No. No, the EPC definitely wants a professional group to come in and do that. It's wetlands, that's why. It's all wetlands and there's special plants that need to be planted in that area. But what was in there before were it these was, invasives? It was a lot of invasives grown there. And there was no plan for the invasives, but they just grew there. They just kept on growing. They, they took over and... Um, I get it. I mean, but you get the iron here, right? Yeah, no. like Some invasives could have been planted. I mean, um... By the Center the Gardner Center has done a lot of educational work for for us. Um, he's held special meetings with us, and um, many of the plants that are now considered invasive. He said we used to sell these here; they were our biggest mm -hmm. sellers, and they were imported. And people thought they were nice plants, and just didn't understand what was going to happen with them. Um, I noticed a lot of town people interchangeably use the term non-native and invasive, and they're not necessarily equivalent, non-native, you can have a perfectly lovely non-native that is not an invasive species. Um, invasives tend to be non-native. But, but so, so some of these things could, could have been purposely planted 20 yes. years ago. Trees of heaven were very popular because they grew very quickly, so and, that's and why you see so many along the runways and stuff. They're really, it's a beautiful tree as a mature tree. It is the original, the tree grows in Brooklyn, the, the novel, that was the tree. If you go around New York and you see a parking lot with two inches of dirt, you will see one of these trees coming up. They're everywhere. And when you pull off one of the exits here, they're on either side. They're all over the place. This is, it's a major, major problem, which is not also unique it, to us. It attracts the, the lantern fly, the smallest lantern fly. That's the that that yeah. yeah, yes. So we're trying to deal with this as best we can. Um, it's probably going to take a much bigger investment as we go further, but this is what we have to deal with at the moment. So moving on to Cherry Lawn. Sorry, it, Diane, when you say bigger investment, like we'll have to get more money from the town? To probably, yes. And, and Stanford, I believe, has uh, committed somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter of a million to this problem. New Canaan is doing, I think, somewhere in the They're spending six figures to hire consultants to yeah. study their invasive issue. Yeah. We've used town residents with subject matter expertise, so people who are master gardeners, et cetera. It just seems like we have a lot of other things to do. We do, but, we, but you, many of our trees were at risk of, mm -hmm. of dying, and, and, right. and tree canopy loss is a major it's climate issue. But we're only talking about the trees in Cherry Long, right? Like this is the problem that's presumably in, town It's in all our parks. All of our parks. Right. But not just We're, our parks, right? Like the, in other words, the bugs are not stopping at the park borders. So if the tree is at the neighbor's house, we still have the problem. That's correct. Yeah. So we're, in addition to- private property. Yeah, so yeah. I guess I'm not trying to understand like, oh, are we just bailing out the ocean with the tin duck here? No, we're also conducting an educational campaign as best we can. <clears throat> we're working with the land trust and pollinator pathways to get the message out. We have two master gardeners on our committee. They did a whole series of meetings over 
uh, month of June at the library uh, <clears throat> where they were passing out literature describing what these uh, bushes and trees were and advising homeowners how they could get rid of it. We had a meeting at uh, the Gardener Center in March to talk about invasives and how to get rid of them and what you can plant in, your, in their place. So again, this is, uh, yeah, you can't do it all overnight, but we've started. So I, to, to Ed's point, I mean, I think the other side of it would be to make sure that we continue to talk to uh, Board of Education as well, right? I mean, because um, the five elementary schools, MMS and HH and um, uh, Darien High School, you can find the same basics, right? Yep. Um, so I don't know how much we get to cross and work with them, but I will say I have seen um, our invasive committee also reach out to uh, uh, private individuals. Perfect example is right here on the corner. Oh, uh, no, I take it back. Pear Tree Point. Pear Tree Point. Pear Tree Point, there was a massive tree that happened on a uh, private individual lot right there. We were able to discuss with them. They removed it. So, I mean, it's, uh, it, it's, Difficult. I'm all for doing it. I just yeah. like when we talk about it's 25 now, and maybe it's 250. Uh, it's just like of course, uh, of course, I understand. The other good thing we saw is protecting the tree canopy because um, when this was brought to our attention a few years ago by some of the master gardeners in town, many of the trees in the park were at risk. They, they would have they would have died if we not ran the same thing back here. It was so overgrown that the, the, we were going to lose the trees and. Now, as a commission, historically, we've taken preserving the trees in town very seriously. And, um, you know, just right up the street, you know, at Finley School, we probably had 20 trees come down in the last two weeks. You know, none of us love. It's just, it's going to make the neighborhood hotter. It's, we already have a tr terrible drainage problem on the street. It's going to make that worse. It's, so, you know, we really want to make sure we protect the trees that we have in the parks and, and removing the invasive vines and such has been, you know, really critical. And the, the staff has done a lot of the work. They have saved us a tremendous amount of money by just stepping up and saying, you know, we'll, we'll do this work for the get into our program. So um, that's what's really helped us. It's also open space. Yeah, so we've created all the space as well. Yeah. They, they took, they cleared up all the space. Oh, yeah, so no, it's, it's, better. Better. it's just like yeah. now it's, there's a void there, and that's yeah. why um, Mary Louise is going to something like mm -hmm. this place to put things that grow wild and and then the, the invasives can't take over again because that's what happens is they take over and they lose the team. lose all that great space. You know, so. Okay. Where are our gardens? Cherry Lawn Gardens. Uh, there are 63 gardens currently under cultivation at Cherry Lawn. <clears throat> and I will tell you, they all look gorgeous at the moment. The lettuce is finished. The tomatoes are in the process of ripening up. Um, every garden is different. Um, you can pretty much plant what you want except for potatoes. Um, and so far, this season, we've had one inspection. Um, you have to get your garden under cultivation by a certain date. And you cannot have weeds in the garden or on your paths. And so we conduct three inspections over the course of the summer. And um, if you are found to have weeds in your path or in your gardens, you give me a warning and two warnings and you're out of the garden. We have a waiting list of 20 people um, and that seems to be growing. So we've had one inspection, we've had one social event, um, cocktails, wine, cheese, whatever, kind of a get together at the beginning of the season. We had uh, Darian Magazine came by and did a picture-taking session. Nice. Huh? Nice. Yes, which and they're going to feature the gardens in the August issue of the magazine. Uh, the Darian Nature Center takes their children on tours of the gardens throughout the summer. Uh, so that's very nice. And um, the other thing that's important is uh, next year we celebrate 50 years of the Cherry Lawn Gardens. So a committee has been formed and we're going to have all kinds of activities scheduled for next summer. So, that's great. That's great. So far everybody's taking care of their gardens, don't Yes, we? there was only one, I think one person who was cited 
for having uh, weeds and path back. back the corner a lot. Oh. There's a corner lot there that's very overgrown. I think that probably is the one that was cited. Yes. Did we make um, the EBC yes. when they were at Cherry Lawn also said that they didn't like the fact that all the weeds are being piled up behind the garden and wanted that that issue has not really been resolved as okay. such. <clears throat> it was mentioned at an initial meeting that um, some people are gathering up their weeds and taking them mm -hmm. to the dump as opposed to using that area uh, to the what is it to the east of the gardens mm -hmm. that was being used as kind yeah. of a dumping ground. Yeah. So um, that is being being encouraged. Encourage, but not, not to use that spot and not go to the dump. Yeah, yeah. I thought you're supposed to take it to the dump. I thought yeah. a break said right. not to put things there anymore. There's one right. right there. There's one thing there. Well, you, yeah. can, you, you can take things to the dump. I know, but clearly, the so people are starting to do Oh, they are. Well, I thought you yeah, said they weren't. No, no, no. Not, no, not no, everybody. They are starting to oh, do that. Okay. So <coughs> we may have to think of more Correct. ways to Correct. again enforce that because Rick was pretty Correct. adamant um, Correct. that we should be using that. So okay. that's the summary there. Great. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Uh, you're going to cover uh, Baker since uh, Janet couldn't make it at the last minute. Sure. So, um, let's see if this works. So, there was a Zoom meeting on um, July 9th. So, um, if this comes up, we will get this going. Why it looks like that. Um, it's like completely in March. There we go. So, um, but I can't, if I blow that more, it doesn't come up. You'll see some renderings on the other side. So since the last meeting when we went over this, um, we updated a little bit. They were able to give us um, some new pricing, which I don't have to share because we're still working on it. But within the budget, we were able to, because um, I think if you remember, we had um, talk about being able to um, lower the cost for installation. So that did happen. So they were able to add in um, this spinner here. Um, this is a um, uh, one of the infinity bowls that you sit in and, they, and spins around. And then the other piece that was added was in here. And that's one of those accessible little diggers that the kids absolutely love. Um, so we were able to do that. Um, they did rotate um, the swings, which are in this top one, the, um, so that they were facing towards the road. So that was a comment that was made that if they were watching and it was going the other way, this way at least the parents can watch, also see the kids on the other play structure at the same time. Um, and we did orient the returned. Um, actually, I'm going to switch to one of the other views so you can see it better. Um, the, what was in our budget for the cost? 161000 Okay, thank you. So, well, I think it was 150 when I was looking at the budget. It was 150 and then they did an extra 
um, eleven thousand for the swing okay, set. Swing set we never installed. So. So. Basically, what you can so I remember when, uh, when I was here. Yes. So part of what we did too, and my I had a conversation with MRC Mike from MRC. Um, just to get a better understanding of where this, where we were with this project. Um, if you recall, part of our conversation was about accessibility. Um, so one of the things that we did with this is we kind of rotated this. So um, uh, I believe this piece here is what's considered the transfer station. So we switched it because it was on the far side. This way, it's closer to the entrance way when we come in. This is showing it as port in place, but it will not be port in place. Um, as we found out, you know, it, the cost was just going to be so much. What is port in place? Port in place is uh, like a, a rubber surface. It's yeah. port in place, but the, the cost is is probably huge. Is, so it's like mulch or something. No, um, yeah, I'll go over it's to the new McGowan playground, and that surface so goes in and bounce, and, and right. you get a sense of it. So kitchen falling. Right. 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 So right. Sorry, we are going to. We're not going to have. Port that port will not be here. So we'll have. So, um, so that was one of the things, um, just to go over some of the questions that kind of came up at last, last meeting was, um, one was, do we have to make all the playgrounds accessible because we have some that we made kind of fully accessible? So the answer is yes. Um, every single unit needs to be looked at as um, being ADA compliant. Um, part of this is that um, while the wood chips the engineer wood fiber is technically compliant. Reality-wise, it really is not accessible for, uh, for for people in wheelchairs or that have stability issues. So one of the things that we've done is um, I reached out. I had conversations with MRC and another company, and I think what we're going to be able to do they they gave me a price to do the whole thing, which is going to be too much. But we there's a matting product that can be put down on top of the engineered wood fiber and I think what we'll do is use that number one it helps with the maintenance costs down the road it keeps the chips in place so it's again more um, for that critical hall, fall zones um, it makes it more more cushiony um, without like you would put it under the swings because if you notice every time you go swings right that's the surfacing is always pushed out um, so what we'll probably what I'm working on now is kind of creating where I think we want to have those that access those access routes so it'll look similar to Cherry Lawn where if you recall there's port in place that's going in and then also wood chips so we'll do a similar thing like that probably with matting so I'm working on that with the company so that they can give us some pricing um, and I think that would be a good solution so that we can um, again make this you know, more, more readily accessible, also help with maintenance costs down the road. And also, if you look at both the master plan, if you look at the specific recommendations on Baker, one of the recommendations was made to make that playground accessible. And of course, our standards of care, we talk about wherever possible, we want it accessible mm -hmm. in the future. So, you know, as I thought about it, I was feeling a little uncomfortable that we, we weren't addressing that anyway. Mm -hmm. So I really credit Jen for doing a lot of homework to find this, an alternative. Yes, Jen. Just roughly speaking, how how old is what we're replacing? Uh, 20, 25, 30 years. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's been a long time since I've had kids old. there at that park, but like for the typical customer, are they going to be saying, oh, this is so much better than what was there before? Yeah. I would say, yeah. 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 Um, it's more, there's a lot more features to it. Like right now, it's just the age group for this park. Um, this is going to be. Uh, uh, two, two, to two to twelve, two to twelve, which yeah. is the same as what's there now. Playground design has really changed over the last. It, it, five five ten. Ten. it changes yeah. all the time, but um, more challenge play and things that were you know stretch kids' abilities and whatever, mm -hmm. and kind of that more excitement or much more in, in vogue where the industry has gone. So um, those pieces really just. Blue or purple line, so I'm not sure what color he is. <laughs> um, the Barney air, I think, is kind of gone. Um, just to touch on some of the other questions that had come up was the height. Um, the height of the, the highest deck is um, five feet, 
which is the same as what's there now. Um, the highest piece on it is about nine feet. Unfortunately, I don't know if Janet has that information, but I, I don't um, as to what's currently the very highest, um, highest point. Um, there were questions about railroad tie, railroad ties, you know, concern with that. They're just, um, they're pressure, pressure, they would just be pressure treated that you get anywhere, which is no longer the arsenic stuff. You know, now it's all done. So it's not creosote, it's nothing like that. So um, that should not be any issue. Uh, again, we're still working with them on the removal if we're doing it in house. Again, if we're saving money, uh, I believe we can do some with removing the wood chips. Um, that are there and save some costs, which I think will help also cover the, the cost of the mats, um, which again are a fraction of the cost of, of um, a board in place type structure um, surface. And then um, we're still waiting to hear back how it might, there was some um, requesting and questioning of could we donate this, uh, the current one. Um, mm -hmm. So we're working with that group again, trying to see if that will, um, if that can pan out. So. If that happens, it changes the way it has to be taken down. So that's so we're we're working on that. But I, I think this is all moving along um, well. Uh, we do need the other question that came up was about the ARPA funding. Um, so we just have to have a contract and the purchase order in place by the end of the year. So it's not that we have. I think there was a thought at one point that the construction had to be done by the end of the year. So I think I think we're in a good place. We're probably. Um, be coming to the commission, I would say probably September, October for the final approval as we keep moving with these other little details. Okay, Janet reached out this afternoon and wanted to know if we could vote on it in August. I mean, that was a little early. Yeah, because I think they are done in place. Yeah, I would think probably more like September. Um, and uh, it all comes right that will be, uh, be in place by the spring. Right? I think the thought would be to do a spring spring bill. So again, we can take it down over the winter time, um, depending on what the weather's like. And mm -hmm. I mean, if it's if it's not being donated, we can do it easy. <laughs> Knock down, take it out quick and easy. Otherwise, it's got to be every bolt has to be un, undone and marked and tagged and that will not fall on mm -hmm. us. That will not be any additional cost to the town. Um, but if we're able to do that, and it's a a matter of a couple different groups getting together and coordinating that. So that's what we're trying to work on right now. See if that's possible. I have a few. I'm just not familiar with playground equipment at this point. So it sounds like the pour and play is almost like, is almost like the Cadillac of the surface of when it comes to putting in new playground equipment. For a project like this, could you just provide like if all this were done? optimally with that kind of surface versus what's currently done was, is that it was going to be another I think forty five thousand okay. dollars or so okay. um, just to do that surface let alone everything else so that's what made it cost prohibitive okay um, so that's why I think similar to cherry lawn you know the entire thing was not done mm -hmm. in port in place it was it's, it's got yeah. it's got pieces and so there's pathways and things to make it um, a bit more accessible. It does tend to also have better um, uh, safety for fall. Yeah, for yeah, fall. yeah. So it's got more yeah. Um, yeah. tight attenuation. Okay. Attenuation. And what's happening to the current um, Cherry Lawn playground? That's that donated. Is that being donated? Yeah, yeah. that was donated. That was donated. It's all about our, our bands or chicken. And is there any financial benefit for donating no. that? No, okay. because they have to take more time. Yeah. So we asked that because we're like, well, now that you're doing yeah. that, and he was like, no, you got to have it. He's like, you get this is you're paying for what we got, yeah. and you're probably it takes more time to do it. Okay. And I don't know if you've been there. Literally, yeah. to yeah. it apart, there's so many. I mean, the yeah. concrete that's coming out of the ground is all of oh, yeah. just Putman has like huge a ton miles. of footers to keep things from moving. And we're gonna have tomorrow morning down yeah. there. So. Yeah, so all that concrete yeah. has to be chipped off. Mm -hmm. It's got to be you know, removed, mm -hmm. labeled. Everything's labeled and everything, so they know how to yep. put it back together. So okay. um, something that could come down in a day or two will take probably a couple weeks to, yeah. to do. So okay. it'll have some like the program. I mean, the project longer. Yeah. yeah. So the spot right there by the where the springs are. I know that's higher up. Is that really even like that? That looks really like a large flat area. 
Um, it's pretty even. I know. Because um, I remember it being a little sloppy. It was a little oh, sloppy. Yeah. There, there's yeah. a little bit, but I think from what Janet said, you know, for them to do the earth work to do it, it's it's, min do it, it's yeah. minimal. I believe that's all part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, like they talk a lot about, you know, there's so many trees to get there. Mm -hmm. Are they being pretty careful with like once they put that equipment in? Because like, you look at the stuff that's going in at Cherry you know, they have to put all the the skirting and stuff, um, and there's a lot more trees at Baker, so I guess Mike can work on that just yeah. to be aware. Yeah, yeah, no, I because that was why we were hoping that they didn't do the fence first because we felt like the fence along the street would give them an entry so they wouldn't have to go okay. to the trees, oh, yeah. but they did the fence with, before they should do it. That's what mm -hmm. we asked them to do at our last meeting. And they, no, I think we checked, we, we checked, and we, and we were told it was okay to go ahead with the fence. Yeah, but it, but it was, it's easier to get that way than to go through those trees that are old, the trees that are just mm -hmm. That's why we want to be that avenue to kind of, you know, it's easier. Anyway, and it's also a post mail fence, and we didn't realize it was going to be a post mail fence when we had it installed. So it's a little fence. Susan, it's a little hard to hear you. Oh, no, we were talking about the fencing. Is, you know, like, remember we had that meeting where we talked about waiting on the fencing because maybe that was another way for them to get to the playground and install it? I don't know if you remember the 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah. And, then, no, um, we and then we just said hold off and then they did the install and then we're like, oh, it's post and rail. And none of us had any idea it was post and rail. Um, we installed. So, yeah. Okay. It was an mm -hmm. in between five Yeah, I, I was surprised when I saw the fence going up because I thought that we had discussed it. The equipment would be removed right out that, mm -hmm. that yeah. way. But, but anyway, just but it's to make sure Mike knows that like, you have to be very sensitive. Careful, yeah, those trees are yeah. really old. And, yeah. you know. and, and provide important shit. Yeah. And they're yeah. great trees. Yeah, they're great trees. Okay. Okay. And then we had talked about for next year's budget, possibly looking at adding a sidewalk that comes from the right. parking lot to connect to the playground which mm -hmm. for the That's additional accessibility as well. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money to do it with this as part of this, so we would look to do that. Any other questions on the progress of the um, Baker? That's our third grade round. We had proper funding for three third rounds, so this is the, it's the last of the three. Jennifer, <coughs> do you have the other side views? Um, yeah, if I <laughs> I was like, we just want to plan. I know. I, know. Oh, I can't wait to plan. Oh, um, mm -hmm. uh, Chris is like great at testing out new playgrounds. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter. Is That's how we got so good. <laughs> you want to be the first? I heard that new slide at Cherry One is good. Is, is oh, we've been there twice a week. Just keep looking. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it looks great, doesn't it? I love the tree. It looks mm -hmm. very um. Yeah. The slanted saucers at the top. to look any higher than the dinosaur. It doesn't. Like, no. Uh, so. no. No. It's going to be good. Good. This no. vendor is more. It's a different vendor. It's, it's also, different. the colors are not as vibrant. That's the cherry one. Mm -hmm. Those are the cup sauces. These the cup sauces. Oh, yeah, those are the yeah. cup yeah. sauces. They love those. They can yeah. go for hours on those. And this is the little there's a thing, and I know we had those in Westport. Oh my God, they, they, they love them. Right? All that they, they love those. Yeah, looks great. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so Susan, just commenting on the Cherry Long Park playground. I have heard from several families how grateful they are. They're yes. so excited. Mm -hmm. um, and kudos to you. Mm -hmm. It'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. So, and so. It looks, I, you know, like the height, it looks, it actually it looks good there. Mm -hmm. nice well, it is hidden nicely in yeah. the nice. and that was, uh, you know, I was worried about it, you were cool about it, but I, you know, it fits okay. I heard that we're getting a special gift with some extra pieces, we were told, at the, one of our meetings by mistake. Oh, so, wow. So we're getting a lot of value with this new playground, so mm -hmm. I'm just excited. I, I Hopefully. I will echo what you saying about that. Uh, every time we go down there, the... I know that the height was a potential point of contention, 
with those trees, it is so nestled it's, in perfectly. It's I mean, you could not say hey, it fits right. well, it feels good, especially now that like the full height is up there. Yeah. Driving by, I don't see anything, which I believe. They did do a minor, yeah. they did bring it down though. Yeah, but I'm just saying for no. now, now where it is, it looks yeah, fantastic. It was, pretty, it was pretty worrisome, but you're right, too, it's nestled in. Yeah. I think that's and the color of right blue is nice because it's our color. Yep. The town color, so. Yeah. Wow. Can't wait. Oh, thank you for my break, by the way. I did see it. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, we were excited about Thank you. That. Really appreciate that. We figured a brick was better than another plant. Yeah. <laughs> I have lots of plants. Did you have another plant about the brick? I was just part of the project. I know you were in charge. No, we didn't announce you were in charge of the bricks. Two meetings ago. I actually opened the box and found it. It had my name on it. Susan Daly. Aw. It's really funny. Yeah, that's great. It was really nice. It was really thoughtful. Well, well deserved. Well deserved. Okay, any more questions on playgrounds? Okay, Jim, off to uh, pickleball. All right, so on pickleball, um, since our last meeting, I met with uh, both Jen and Cassie, and we reviewed the work of the pickleball committee, um, the committee's uh, recommendations, and next steps, which include now uh, we're going to need to gather data on um, courts, park, park activity, et cetera. Uh, before we determine what the next um, possibilities are. So that's where we are at this point. Wouldn't, I mean, when you say like get out of here, like, I mean, I'm there all the time. Like, shouldn't we just be bringing this back for a discussion? Well, they did have a subsequent meeting. If, I mean, because I, I've watched all of your meetings, and mm -hmm. like you have like a bunch of good ideas, but I just kind of think like from the standpoint of town spending a lot of money on Great Island, we have to do all this work at the beaches. I just don't see how we really have the money mm -hmm. to look to do anything other than line one of the other courts, which I would kind of call the cheap and cheerful solution. And, right. I, mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, I know that's that what the two guys were for. Yeah, was, yeah. Was, to, was to line one of the tennis courts. Um, but in order to get this that even approved, in order to do that, we need to gather data um, to support that there's enough interest in pickleball to align the other court for, okay. to create a hybrid court. Okay. Um, so Cassie's in the process of putting that together. She already has the pickleball data really together yeah. because she has everybody has to sign up and yeah. um, most people sign up. Some will walk on, but for the most part, they sign up and they pay the fees. So we know what the volume is. We do know that there's a wait list, et cetera. Yeah. There's a demand for it. But we also want to find out what is the demand for the tennis courts. Yeah, well. how many people are, how many people are actually are using it. Yeah. And today we don't have a system in place yeah. to do that. Yeah. So we need to put a system together that captures it so that it mirrors what we're doing with pickleball and then be able to have that data to say, hey, there's a demand for this. There's not as much activity, let's say, on the tennis courts, but there is on the pickleball, and this is why we need to create a hybrid court. But that said, I, I hear your point on the data, but like, did we collect data when we built the tennis courts in the first place? Like, it would seem to me that, well, like, I don't know, I mean, I go over there and I like, I don't want to say I, have, I do my own little anecdotal data, but it's like, I take account of who's playing tennis and who's playing pickleball, and you know, I just text it to a couple of my friends, I guess it's a little bit of a joke as to how infrequently the tennis courts are used, or is how frequently the pickleball courts are used. So I'm not saying you shouldn't get more data, but I just wouldn't want that to be an excuse to not move forward. Right. And um, my understanding is I wasn't on the commission at the time when we voted to um, redo the courts, the tennis courts, but I don't think we gathered any data to support that. Well, we were they, they were in a tremendous state of disrepair. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in terms of the usage. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, it's like, I think Dave's right. I just like to, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not this meeting, but yeah. at a subsequent time, like, just sort of look to make, because right now they're not in, it's not so busy as it's the summer, but, like, it's going to be busy again come September, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, observationally, I mean, I go over, Amy lives across the street, so she's there a lot, and observationally we're seeing that the tennis courts are actually getting they are a lot more use. Now that they've been repaired, and they are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Actually, I've been there. Well, that's great. Like, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, no, it's great. So yeah, people were thrilled with the surface. Yeah, we've been all giving anecdotal evidence, but you know, I've been there times where nobody was on pickleball and all the tennis courts were full. But at the end of the day, I remember years ago, my manager said, you know, we, we can't, you know, playing the budget on the anecdotal evidence, so we really have to. You know, think about it, and you know, I think that's where Jen coming in with you know, a combination of her parks and rec experience and her MBA. And, you know, she's looked at some of the information that you know the office has put together and, and feels it needs needs work. So, um, and and there is enthusiasm by some of our town leaders to build additional courts, and I think to do that, we have to we would have to build a really good supporting. Yeah, no. But well. to be clear, I'm not suggesting building additional courts. Well, there, that there are some fairly senior people in town. I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. From the standpoint of like you know lying in these courts is probably something that takes not much more than an afternoon. So. Yeah, understood. But the discussion, which I think you said in some of the meetings, you know, was was not just about lying in the court. It was the concern about the traffic, you know, the, the demand on the park from the new playground, etc. And it was it was sort of competing resources was part you know part of the issue. So, so I guess we need I don't to really work through think, that. Yeah, but well, I don't know. To me, like, I don't really think that's a reason not to like the courts. I mean, well, the commission did so at the time. Right, and so I'm suggesting that it come back as a discussion and maybe the commission will have changed its mind. Well, let's see what Jim finds out. I think, I think mm -hmm. having some good data etiquette in, in just in general is always helpful for us. And Yeah, unfortunately, the Jen, correct me if I'm wrong, but unfortunately, it's we won't have the data on time for this season. Right, it would have to be for 2025 at this point. And right, I mean, Cassie, yeah, right. I mean, we're, what we would be giving you now, I mean, by the time we compile it, this season would be done in terms to be able to implement anything. Yeah, right. so the whole season doesn't really end. Well, they're out there, well, 12, they're out there yeah. 12 months of a year. Yeah. The show is not off on I mean, so the, for the summer, you know, like the yeah. summertime yeah. would be. Yeah. But I think it's well, also. Guys, guys, we're the commission. Guys, guys. I yes. think it's it's okay. also important to see how tennis fares, and you know, to give that some a little bit of time as they, as we are seeing more usage happening, so that we can properly allocate or collect that data as well. So we're looking at a couple of different ways to also maybe go beyond just what's there to be able, you know, just what's in our database, but maybe ways to be able to track usage a little bit. I'm happy to volunteer, so I'm actually going to just go up there with a the flipper. That's helpful. Um, the congestion study, I know we've talked about it several times. Where are we with that? No, because it was your vote from the budget. What's the congestion study for? We had asked for somebody to have professionals do a, a traffic and parking, et cetera, analysis for us to do that to get a handle of what the activity in the park is, as well as is possibly it? recommend if there's ways that the roadway could be redesigned to make the flow of traffic better. Uh, that first L curve is yeah, yeah it's I think very people dangerous stop because people stop there. You know, we've got children playing Little League, we have soccer players, we have the nature center, we have the gardeners who say they dog can't walk, dog walkers, and we really wanted to look at is there a better way to lay out the traffic flow. But yeah, we have like I know the nature center has a traffic director in the mornings. Mm -hmm. They do have drop off. They stop all of they make everybody stops and they can make that turn out so that they have people stop. So they do that every day during their season. Which is fine, but that's not something that we I don't think as a commission thought that that was gonna that level of activity was gonna happen at one time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's basically it's pretty hard to get to the front end. Especially even with no playground, like no playground traffic. So how did you guys plan for a traffic congestion with the playground? Well, it was if existing. There was no it was existing. The playground was existing, so we didn't think it was going to be any different. <coughs> Court order, Jim, Jim and Neil, some pickleball piece. I feel like we're sort of starting to go everywhere. Um, if there's no more on pickleball, then I suggest we move to the director's report. I just had one comment regarding traffic. It seems to be that might be integral. I agree with your point, but one thing. Um, it's integral to a lot of the issues that have been discussed regarding pickleball, tennis, new playground. So um, I wasn't here when it was cut from the budget, but it sounds like it might be an important thing 
to re-examine and push however we can, because a lot of the issues we're discussing seems to be hinging on, well, what's the traffic? Can we put in a new, can we redirect? Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, but no, we can go ahead. I just wanted to say that, yeah. We will probably put it back for next year's budget, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, yeah. we'll lose an entire year. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Jen. All right. Um, well, hopefully you read um, my little report. Again, trying to kind of <laughs> consolidate a little bit for you. Um, so just a couple of main things. Um, we Beach, uh, Meadow, and, Meadow and Trail. So since our last meeting, uh, staff did clear up some of the debris and stumps and kind of rough graded and seeded the area. Uh, unfortunately, the weather has not been great. Uh, it's been hot and dry and obviously it's not irrigated or anything so uh, it's not coming in as well as we had liked or uh, would have liked so we will be adding some uh, additional seed when the growing season gets a little bit um, more appropriate and, and, and better um, so uh, we also are setting a meeting with Weston and Samson and some rep representatives from um, the Naropa Bay Homeowners Association to dis discuss the fall planting trees um, that we're going to be doing in the fall. Um, so we'll be doing that um, pear tree improvement project. Uh, that uh, the funding for Weston and Sampson to um, create, develop our new our bid specs. Uh, we did get the money for that. Uh, it was a, just last night. It was approved by the Board of Selectmen on July 1st and then again with the Board of Finance last night. So we'll work to get those together as quickly as possible and, and get them out. Um, so we, I think we would expect, we were saying last night, by the time those get put together and the work um, gets bid out, we get all that back and not wanting to disturb the beach season next year, we probably look to try to get shovels in the ground in the fall of, not this fall, but the, the following fall. Um, just some of our numbers um, are, Beach permit sales are up about $12,000 or 3%. Uh, we went from 416,000 to about 428,000. Our beach gate sales are up uh, about 38% from last year by $4,929. Um, and again, in there it had the, the uh, from $18,033 this year compared to 13,104 last year. I think a lot of that has to do with the season, the weather. Uh, last year was terrible. It was um, mm -hmm. rained every weekend, <laughs> every Saturday and Sunday. We, we had a lot of rain, so we think part of it is that. And we do have a different security company this year that we think might be um, mm -hmm. doing a better job. Um, and then our summer program registration, number of participants that we have in there, um, not necessarily unique participants, but just registrations. Um, are up about 12%, so we're, we're up about 186. Uh, we're currently working on our fall winter brochure, uh, and registration for that will be starting uh, August 21st. Um, we were supposed to have in-service training with our lifeguards and post 53 today. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel at the last minute due to the storms that we all witnessed and got wet in, um, so we're looking at rescheduling that. Um, and we continue to do in-service training with our, our lifeguards and staff. Um, when it comes to our maintenance, we're busy doing our regular maintenance, the fields, bowing, you know, um, breaking the beaches, all of that. Um, we did put in a new water line since our last meeting at the community gardens, uh, and we did add um, an additional valve so that we can have the irrigation on the ball field separate from the, the, gardens. the gardens because it was all one. Um, so if one was off, the other was off. I'm just an addendum to that. I don't think the water fountain works there. You don't think what? The water fountain. Okay, that chair is on. on. Where you have the area. Just to we'll double check that. Yeah. Yeah, the, one in the, ba the one in the oh, bathroom, bathroom works, but not where the dog no, fountain is. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll take a look at that. Um, Oh, we painted the um, the tennis wall here at Lee Beach. That oh, we're going to painted, so that's done. Um, 
the six paddle court has been completed, so that's ready to go. That's um, one of the big things that we're seeing is we, we're having a lot of um, trees that are needing to be removed that are beyond our capability. Almost, mm -hmm. uh, I've pretty much already blown through our budget in that line, but there are trees that are in danger of people's homes and things like that on property lines. So we have to take take them down. Um, so um, that are either, you know dead or diseased, so um, or damaged. We had a big one come down in Tilly Park. Um, in one of the storms, a whole half of the leader came off, but then when you looked, it was completely rotted inside. So um, that's um, something that we're dealing with. It's apparently very hot. I was like, how do we have? <laughs> it, it, it doesn't usually all happen like this all at once. So um, you know, we're a couple weeks into the budget, the fiscal year, and it's pretty much gone. Um, just in terms of events, uh, we had the concert here on June 28th. Um, which was really well attended. I think we had about 18, uh, 800 people. Um, fireworks, unfortunately, um, but he knows they were postponed last Friday um, to this Friday, at least the weather. This Friday should be primo. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Unfortunately, you know, we have to make a call at a certain time. There's a lot of pieces of Moving, moving parts and people that need to be able to prepare um, and get things. So we have to make the call the day before. Um, so hopefully we will look at it. Good weather, I'm not even paying attention to it. That's how, that's how firm I am in it. Um, and then we've got our upcoming summer, more concerts coming up with um, the Corbin District and Baywater Properties. Uh, there's one on July 26th, uh, August 2nd and August. 16th from 6 to 9 at Tilly Park and then we do have mark your calendars because we have our luau coming up uh, August 23rd here at Wee Beach from 530 to 830 so I think that's what I got. Uh, green water. Oh um, so Tilly Pond um, there we're having some issues at uh, which are recurring issues um, at Tilly Pond and Cherry um, the Cherry Lawn Pond. Um, Tilly is an algae situation, and um, Cherry Lawn is duckweed. Um, another piece of the issue at Cherry Lawn is the aerator or fountain that's there is on a solar panel, but the solar panel, if it's, there's no like battery backup with it, so it doesn't store any power. So if the sun is not bright and sunny on that, it's not working. Um, so we're looking into that, um, but the other pieces, we are waiting on permits from Connecticut DEP. Um, I've been working with the, our, our vendor so that we can be able to treat those two two issues, uh, the duckweed and the algae. We This came up last year, and we talked about what kind of treatment you guys were doing. Like, is it chemical? Um, I believe it is chemical. We did talk work with our health department that also reviewed what it would be. Um, some of it is the same stuff that you would put in drinking water. Um, I don't have the information with me, but yes, that was um, one yeah. of them. And then a way to try to balance um, the water and kind of reset is sort of the terminology that they use. Yeah, there was just some concern about that, that if it was something pretty like, strong or toxic, mm -hmm. that because it's going to go eventually. And yeah, no. given all the issues we've had in the tree water that we've been hearing from like, people are pretty. Right. So, you know, we just want to make sure that it's not yeah. only pretty but vital. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and alive. Um, have you addressed the runoff, the fertilizer runoff from the neighbors of the Citrion and how that affects the pond? And because we might clean it up and yet the, we haven't really systemically taken care of that issue. Right. right. Well, so, I'm not sure, and I, again, I would have to do get a little bit more information from them on, again, they're two different issues. Yeah. So, cherry lawn in terms of the, of the duckweed, if that's caused by the nutrient, the, what's happening with the algae at Tilly is definitely the, um, the nutrient load, so it's all the runoff. Um, I've been told that that is actually fed by all the catch basins. Mm -hmm. So that's what's filling that water. So clearly there's, it's, it's runoff from homes, streets, everything. So that's what's happening there. 
Um, so I don't know. So I'd have to do some more, get some more information on, well, that, would be on that, if that helped, if but that is part of what's causing the duck, the duck weed to. Let's hope it um, isn't. And, and again, I think hopefully the aerator, if we can maybe change that so that it's working on a more continual basis, mm -hmm. if that helps with the, the flow. Well, we may be a bigger problem from CTD to do this. To do anything. Okay. Yes, it, we need the permits. It may be a bigger problem than just having enough sun because I was down there and it was super sunny and there wasn't one. Okay. So. so, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll double check. I think it's in a minute where I was there on Saturday. With, it, was, it was. So it was, was running. It was okay. running. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. it's bizarre. I mean, well, we were there one day and I. <laughs> it seemed sunny out, it seemed bright. Yeah. But, it, but wasn't there was, it wasn't running, and then all of a sudden, I guess the clouds were just enough moved, and then all of a sudden it came up, in. and then it kind of went back off yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I don't really understand what it. It's very helpful to really look. Yeah. Jennifer, um, anything <clears throat> going on with that tree? Or the removal of the tree in the pond? Or where are we on that? Cherry lawn. That cherry lawn. There's a big There's tree, big tree down in the pond. We couldn't get to it or something. Yeah, well, yeah. it's really tough to get to. Well, they've been wanting to get rid of that tree for several years. They said it was cheaper to dredge the pond probably than to hire a crane to bring that tree up. That was the last thing we talked about. Trent. It would be a dredge crane to bring that tree up. Yeah. 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 That was the last thing we talked about. Trent. It would be a dredging project versus a get it out with a crane because we're basically paying a lot for a crane mm -hmm. to take one tree out. Whereas if we need that pond, needs to be dredged anyway because it's pretty filled in. Mm -hmm. And especially with what we're talking about in terms of the nutrient level in there. So, I think we also did a discussion last summer <clears throat> about access through neighbor's property where yeah. we have to bring a backhoe through mm -hmm. that way to actually pull the whole thing out, too. So, mm -hmm. neither one is easy. I think that's right. Well, that's yeah. all wetlands back there, too. Yeah, yeah we're exactly. Happy it was, yeah. But we did talk about dredging it being more costly. You know, if we're going to do it, we might as well roll that in. We well. definitely get letters, we get several letters. A year from neighbors, you know, neighbors are just people who go to the park. It's just yeah. saying, like, people, when are you going to get rid of that tree? Right now. And Jennifer, do we have an um, estimated time for uh, the opening of the cherry lawn thing? Um, They're pulling the corn plant on Friday as planned. Okay. But it takes a while to cure. Yeah. And also, they got to clean up and finish the path. Like, the, they're setting the concrete for the like um, the fundraising bricks, I'll call them. Yep. And then they're going to put in the, the patio, like the flat part that has yep. no fundraising bricks on it. So, and they have to clean up kind of, they're, they're working backwards. So they said end of, of July, you know, heard, beginning, yeah. first week in August, we could have okay. a party that's at our opening. Okay. But, that's, but all the rain and heat hasn't really accelerated the project. How, I mean, as long as we're on pace before school starts. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, I think they were saying the first week of August that it would be safe because that surfacing, that pouring plant, not only do they have to pour it, but they have to let it sure. set for sure. sure. or a while <laughs> so it doesn't, you know. Yeah. It's a concrete, you can't put anything on it. Chris, <laughs> can. Chris is very anxious to get on that. Yeah, yeah right. he is. Right. I think he has to be our first customer. <laughs> and, uh, you may have to elbow Mr. Zabrowski out, though, for the first time. <laughs> no. Jennifer, jumping back to the pond <coughs> and cherry lawn, I have heard that Darien Nature Center has tested the water and it is, the pH factor is in the dead zone. Nothing can live there. And um, I guess some kids have been fishing there and there, there are no fish there. There is nothing alive in that, that pond. Just so it's, it's almost, it's dangerous. And, um, you know, something should be posted saying, do not fish, do not let your dog jump into this, because it's really, um, the acid quality is, is really high. Apparently normal is a five, and that on the right is an 11. Yeah, we did it's a learn to fish really that program there. There was just be a ton of fish in there. No, yeah, we did yeah. deep, we did it. It's, it's a dead <laughs> pond. And no, we know we need to it. Was it was Should we seriously consider dredging it then? Pardon? Should we seriously consider dredging it then? It sh well, it's in the capital budget for next year, mm -hmm. but I think it's something we should consider maybe moving up on the timetable because it really is a dangerous situation. It's far worse than Tilly Pond. It's totally different. 
But I think what Amy said that we're not dealing with why it's happening. And it's really happening because of stuff that we can't control. So just basically cleaning out something that's just going to happen. But it hasn't been cleaned up, Susan, in right. ages and ages. I agree, and ages. but I'm just saying that it's also being constantly involved with things from runoff from people's homes. Yeah, we have to be thoughtful about it. I think it's it's two things. It's twofold. Like you're just putting a band-aid on a situation that needs a lot more than that, you know. I think, I think we should do it, but I think we should do it um, with with some good knowledge. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and there may be short term and long term. Yes, right. That we need. That we need. If it is indeed chemicals that people bring on their property, and we're putting more chemicals in it to fix the problem, it just seems like the worst thing we could do is that, you know. So. But I think we all agree that we need to take a close look at some more. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for Jeff? I just have two quick ones. Um, when we take a tree down, do we plant a new one? Is that our policy? Is that our policy? Yeah, that too. Uh, but so many trees are coming out around town. Not necessarily lost, but right? I see tree trucks knocking a couple of trees down all over the place. I was just wondering, is it our town's policy? That if we take one down, that we replant the tree. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would be nice. It should be. When they did the tree giveaway, remember? Yeah. After the Eversource, but they were a little yeah. keen. But we need to plant real trees. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did a bunch of, uh, at Cherry Lawn, when was that in the two falls ago? Yeah, but that's like. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. Well, we had the tree conservancy in town, which I don't think it was sustainable, but when we did, yeah. They, they plant the trees around. Yeah, the tree conservancy doesn't exist anymore, so right. it's really too bad. Um, Neural Walk is just, they got gold well, standard. Well, they got funding. Yeah, well, because they, they got funding, yeah. But they also had the problem. That's why they were with the funding, yeah, because right. they're, they were in the dirt there. And so they, they were what? They made the case because they did have no tree canopy. Right. That's how they got the right. funding. They had the worst tree canopy in the state. Yeah, so that's how they got the funding. They had huge funding, and they're really, really smart about it. My second question was that um, it appears, according to the map, um, that we have 300 more stickers, meaning 300 more cars signed up to use our beaches this year, which is significant I mean, compared to previous years. Um, and that's without many of the residential projects being completed yet in town that are still under construction. So in the next couple of years, we're going to have, if this keeps going on, a couple of hundred and another hundred and another couple hundred. We only have so much space mm -hmm. for our beaches and parks. Mm -hmm. We should probably address it sooner before it becomes the issue. I don't know what we do. I 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 know what we do. You guys have all heard me talk about you know, the 400 new apartments, which now may be another couple hundred. So. It, it's it's absolutely going to be something we feel very mindful of as we think about the parks and as I've heard me say to the sick of it, these are people who don't have backyards. So where are they going to go? Mm -hmm. They're going to the parks. They're also building by Nelson's. Yeah, that's uh, what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Do we track the number of days where the um, the shack has to close the beach because there are no spaces? Is that easy enough? It's only happened it happened once during the pandemic, and it was yeah. for a few hours. So like, that maybe like would indicate right. that we could easily if that started track. happening. Yes. Yeah, if that was yeah. So so far it, it yeah. has not. Um, I've definitely been down here sometimes when it was mm -hmm. quite full the night of the the Russ yeah. whatever their name was band. Yeah, yeah. It, it, we were pretty full, but mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a perfect night. That was an awesome band. That was a really really great event. Um, but I don't know that anybody got turned away from that event. I, I know. So we're not there, but all these apartments are online yet, and that's that's what's got me concerned. Is it's more and more these apartments come on. Folks, you know, are really looking for the open space and the picnic areas that they don't have. Okay, Jim. To your point, there is a strategic plan and master plan for the parks and rec, and that was written in 2017, which and it's for 10 years. So that will be coming up shortly for um we'll have to revise that yeah. and the baseline for that is a demographic review of the town and it's going it's changed tremendously since 2017 
So that will pinpoint where the spikes are in terms of age and concentration of population. Um, so that would be very important to your point to consider on a going forward basis. But that will come up very shortly yeah. when that will have to be re-looked at and we'll probably have to hire a, an entity to come redo that. That will be a very important working document to go from that will determine the resources that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be honest before we know it. Yeah. 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 We're going to be putting out our piece for firms and going through that process again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You're set for a good agenda? Mm -hmm. Okay. What do I have for you all? Uh, Great Island Committee, not too much to report. Normally we would have met this evening um, immediately preceding this meeting, so I would have more to report, but the, the meeting's been moved this coming Monday. We'll, we'll, we'll be having our first meeting with Lee Hilda Brandt, which is the firm that we selected, so um, I'll have more to share with you. After that takes place, uh, Coastal Commission met on Monday. Not too much new there. They continue to work on the um, Harbor and Mooring Ordinance update, uh, back and forth with the Town Council, and also I guess CT Deep has gotten involved. There's some question about whether they have jurisdiction on some of this or not. So that may slow that down a little bit. A little bit further, the meeting on Monday, uh, one of the policemen who covers the harbor came in and gave a report and said, you know, all in all things are, you know, going pretty, you know, pretty well this season so far in terms of voting and, and whatever. But they have to be vigilant. Um, you know, definitely, I know I've witnessed, you know, a lot of people now swimming across the Winter's Cove and climbing up on the rocks in the Great Island and stuff. And, you know, that can cause issues from safety, but also people are swimming completely across the cove and it's actually pretty dangerous. Um, so they talked about issues like that. Uh, we talked about the Weed Beach project. I did reach out to Dan Biggs today. Um, you know, part of his charge was to come back and say, okay, you know, the bid came in 1.9. The selectman said, you know, can you come back and say how much of the project and how could you phase it to start with a million dollars? Um, he's working on that. Uh, tried to reach me to get an update on when we might see that, but I got an out of office for the week, so um, we don't have an update there, but hopefully. Um, I know he's back next week, and I'll connect with him on that to keep that moving along. Um, because the longer we wait, the price is going to keep going up. Yeah. Get less for that million dollars. As Jen mentioned, she and I went to the Board of uh, Finance last night to get the money for Pear Tree. You know, a lot of discussion, questions, concerned about what the real price tag is going to be. They asked about, you know, could the project be phased? We talked about that a little bit. So. Um, everybody's kind of holding their breath on what that number might look like, but they did agree that we needed the money to go forward, go forward and, and find out what the price tag is going to be. Um, I met with Ed and Cindy to do some orientation a couple of weeks ago. Um, Congratulations, this has been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, a long time coming. Long time. Yeah, and Jen did a great job and even pointed out that, you know, that we have some timing restrictions on when the work can even be done. Um, so even though we think we have three years of change, there's certain time periods because of the oyster beds and what that seasonally that you can't even do construction. So mm. um, it's going to be tricky. Um, Cherry Lawn we talked about. Fireworks of Friday night we talked about. Um, I think that is it. Um, talked about that. Oh, and the other thing is that uh, there is a uh, committee in town called the Operations Planning Committee. Uh, which meets about monthly. It's the first selectman, the chair of the board of ed, the chair of the board of finance, the chair of P and Z, um, chair of RTM, and then Tracy Tracy Merrick attends from time to time. It's really to update, you know, all those different people in terms of key things that are going on in town. Um, and John did suggest um, that Parks and Rec be included in that um, because he feels that you know. Our properties are so heavily utilized, and we have a lot of big projects going on. So, um, I'll be joining that committee going forward. Uh, I'm I'm right, so we'll be able to. Well, it's, for me, it's for us. It's, I, it's to get that representation to really keep key constituents up to date on what's the work that we're doing, and, and I think it'll help us front run a lot of these different types of issues as opposed to what's hearing down the line. So, um, you know, I was pleased that Don was, you know, highly enough of the commission and the work. And the importance of the work that we're doing for the community. Um, 
that he thought that was a, a, a good ad. So. Sounds like a good forum to talk about the tree of heaven, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like well, that's board. where he would say, yeah, yeah, right. possibly, right. Right. because the board, yeah, they're, they're not doing anything. Yeah, so. Right, yeah. Uh, so that is it. Um, unless anybody has any new business they'd like to? Okay. Not just really, just my observation from this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I realize you guys have always been doing it sort of a certain way, but I thought the report you just gave and Jen's report were really like very needy. Have you ever considered kind of leading with that? Because I just, again, I've just watched these board of ed meetings for the like, longest time. The superintendent speaks, the chair speaks, then the final one does business. I just kind of feel like, you know, we're an hour and a half into it and we're getting to like, again, I think this was all really useful and we had Jen's report like um, online, but anyways, just food for thought. Yeah, it was like You can certainly. We can talk about it, put the agenda together. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not going to vote now, so we're going to say 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 we're going